and reigns with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. Christ from the dead 
will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not gathered to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put death to the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. And be to God. We stand for the rest of the nation. symptoms 
which are attributed, which are attributed mainly to stress. That means 25%. 25%. Four out of five adult family members see a need for less stress in the daily life. Approximately half of all diseases can be linked to stress-related origin, including ulcer, colitis, bronchial asthma, high blood pressure, and some form of cancer. Unmanaged stress is the leading factor to in homicide, suicide, child, child abuse, spouse abuse, and other aggravated assaults. The problem of stress is taking a tremendous toll in our economy. And we evaluate it and every year. We spend $64.9 billion to deal with the issue of stress. We could imagine. So we are also now, when we look at the COVID-19 and other problems that are going on in our world, in our society, we could imagine that number increased because that study was done two years ago. And now, it could be done. But my brothers and sisters, today we heard from Scripture, we heard the Lord Himself gives us good news. I know we are all worried, we are weary and tired about what is going on. Whether we are old, young, but we are all worried. Because we don't know what tomorrow will be, how our tomorrow will be. But we always have the Word of God. We always have the voice of Jesus, the voice of the church, the voice of the prophet. Like the like prophet Zechariah today, who is giving hope to the people, who came from exile in Babylon. But when they came back, they see everything had gone. The temple was destroyed. But the prophet gave the people new hope there will be a king a king coming he will be the prince of peace on a donkey things will change things will never be the same again things will change things will never be the same again because when we take the aspect of a donkey that king is not the king that will dress in gold, with purple, with is a, is a, a humble king. The one who will sympathize with the pain, the suffering, the misery of the people. The one who will liberate the people from the yoke of sin, yoke of darkness. The one who will uplift us. The one who gave us a sense of life, a sense of peace. The one who will restore our dignity, our human life. The one who will restore our relationship once again with the Lord. So as St. Paul says in the second reading, St. Paul told us in the second reading, so we have the life of Christ in us. And we need to live as a people of God, as sons and daughters of God. We need to carry that in us 
And we need to be aware of our identity. But if we have, if we have God in us, if we have the life of God of Christ in us, my friends, we cannot let fear, anxiety, stress take our joy away. We cannot. We cannot let sickness, diseases, even COVID-19, we cannot let any of this take our joy away. We all live in fear. In fear. Even now, it's been a uh, how long the church opened its door? It's been more than a month. Look at our church. It's empty. It is empty. People say they are afraid not to get sick, not to get contracted the disease, eh? the virus. However, if the government did not close the local community, government did not close the beach, eh? the beach will, will be filled. Will be filled. The same people who say, I don't want to get, uh, you know, the virus is so, it is, it is, it is, it is so hard, it is scary, it is hard. they are the ones, you know, going to Publix, shopping. Going to the malls, sawgrass, going everywhere, shopping. And we cannot sleep, you know, with fire, you know, you know, at a fear of fire, eh? The other one was walking in Walmart, in Sam's Club, eh? Meeting all kinds of people. And they never said, I am afraid today, I'm not going to work because I am afraid I, I can get contracted. Eh? And I said that. Let me stay in, on Sunday, but on Sunday, let me, let me stay in my confinement house. Eh? And now I, I can watch, I can watch part of the mass while I am chatting, while I am talking on the phone. But I'm laying on my couch, eh? As I said, it's never meant to be that way. Mask never meant to be that way to watch on TV. Yes, there was a situation for your own good. The church always wants the good of these people and there is close. And then for a while, because for the own good, for our own good, but we cannot take that for granted. We cannot take God for granted. So I encourage you who are here this morning, I encourage you who are here this morning to encourage others to come back to church. To come back together as a community. To come to worship our Father together. So again, we cannot let these things take us from the Lord. Now you will say, oh, I am at home. I am at home, I, you know, I, I, I pray, I watch Mass on TV, all the stuff. Mass is not a movie, my friends. Mass is a participation, involvement, and we come together to worship the Lord, to offer Him a public service, public worshiping, thanksgiving together with one voice, to raise our voice to our Heavenly Father. We come to pray for the world. We come to pray for each other. That's why we are here today. Yes, each and every one of you, each and every one of us are on 
it has our burden. The burden. What is your burden today? What is your burden today? Ask yourself this question. In order for you to ask the Lord His help, you need to know what you would like the Lord to help you carry. And some of us, we have psychological burden. We have physical burden, social burden. And some of you, some of us feel we have too many responsibilities. We are caring. So the Lord made that invitation to us, to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Have faith in me. Come to me, all who, who labor and are burdened. I will give you rest. I want to be your young paint. I want to carry. The responsibility you are doing, your work you are doing, we have to do it with love. If you feel that's what you are doing, it's just a duty, it's just a job. Just a job. Let me do my job. And something that I don't like to hear, even among priests, I don't like to hear, oh, this, I just do, I'm doing my job. Being a priest is a service. I mean, being a priest is a service. Once I see you, you tell me it's a job, a job is a job. But how you are doing it? Are you doing it with love? With responsibility? Are you serving? Are you a servant? That each and every one of us from the day of our baptism, we have been called. We have been called to serve the Lord. We have been called to serve our brothers and sisters, to love the Lord and to love others. So if we, are, if we are serving the Lord, we should not see it as a burden. Or maybe if we see it as a burden, because of lack of prayer. Lack of love. What we do. Or what we do, do we see the presence of God in it? As a mother, as a father. Do you, do you see when you go to work to take care of your family? Do you see it as a burden? Or do you see because you go to work to help your family, to provide for your family because you love your family? You love them. There was a story, I was reading a story about a, 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 you know, a little boy carrying his little brother on his back. But he was complaining, saying, your brother is too heavy for you. And then he looked at him and said, no, he's not heavy. He's my brother. He's my brother. As a mother, we used to see it, we used to see it in those kind in Africa, people carry two kids in the back, you know, in her back, eh? But you say, how she, you know, does this? If you ask her, I think she will give you the same response. They are my children. They are my children. Because he or she carries because of love. We can see the same thing the cross. The Lord was carrying his cross. He was carrying his cross. The Lord was not exempted from carrying, you know, the burden of life. 
But the Lord carried it because the love he has for his father. Even he asked father, if it is possible, take this away from me. But it must be your will. If it is your will, let it be done. Because he loved his father. In the gospel, what does he say? You know, no one knows the son except the father, and no one knows the, the father except the son, and anyone to whom the son wishes to reveal him. Because he knows his father, and he loves his father. He carries him because he loves his father, and his love for his father, it was not just a love for his father, but he expressed that. He shared that love with you, with each and every one of us. So he invites us to be part of his love. So he carries his cross for you, for, for me, for you, for all of us. Because he loves us. He never complained about the cross. The heavy, you know. Instead of complaining about his cross, he calls us. He said, offer me. Offer, offer, come, bring your burden. Bring everything, bring everything. Let's, let us do an exchange. And then the burden is the is is burden of love. Love, sacrifice. Who can compare the love of God? Who can compare the love of Christ? My brothers and sisters, with human love. As a matter of fact, for our love to be, a, to be, to live an, a, an authentic love, our love must first and foremost start with the love of God. With the love of God. If we do not have God in our lives, my brothers and sisters, we could say our life is like a vacuum. It's like a vacuum. Or life is a vacuum, that means it's meaningless. There's no sense, eh? And we, what we heard today in social media, in social media, there's some kind of ideology going on, you know, intellectual pride, intellectual pride. They try to use the intelligence of the staff and to turn people away from God. They come with all kinds of things. They question everything. Yes, they must. They, they, they have a right to question everything. But you can, they cannot. You cannot say that God does not exist. And you cannot impede someone to believe in Jesus Christ. If you don't believe, keep your unbelief for yourself. Keep on belief. Keep your unbelief for yourself. Do not disseminate that. To others, trying to take others from the Lord, from Christ. Yes, in the, the course of history of humanity, human beings had made mistakes. They had made mistakes because of their ego. Because of their ego, because of the want of corruption, they want power, they want money. And they had made mistakes. But you cannot cast that on God. You cannot say that this is God, this is Jesus Christ. You cannot say that. Because of our pride, we tend to overturn everything. The truth, we want to, we, we tend to run from the truth. God is the absolute truth, my brothers and sisters. He's the absolute truth. You can look for little, your little truths, your little God. But our God is present. Our God is the source of everything. You may do whatever you want, but at the end of your life, I beg you, you will come back to Him. Live within yourself. Sense of humility. Gratitude. You need to have a sense of humility, gratitude. 
The intelligence you have is not to put God sitting, you know, on the judgment or tribunal or in the chair to judge him. The intelligence you have to recognize what you have, you may be need to come to a sense of gratitude to see what I know, what I discover, the science, everything that I, I have come to know, I have, I have discovered, I have discovered, but you have not created it. Eh? You have discovered, but you have not created it because it was there before. Don't feel pride, take yourself, give yourself credit, give yourself credit. So God has given us, has given you intelligence. From creation, from foundation of the world, the Lord has created us to be, to work with Him, to be His, you know, cooperator, to work together, collaborator, right? And he says, be fertile. Be fertile. God has given us everything. But we need to recognize, we need to have a sense of humility. A sense of gratitude. To recognize that what we have, who we are, is not because we deserve, because it is the grace. Everything is grace. He has blessed us. And we need to be thankful. As Jesus calls us, He calls us today. Do not let your heart be troubled. He calls, He tells you, Come to me, or you will labor. What burden you? Bring it to the Lord. Bring it on His altar. Bring it in prayer. Do not think you can resolve everything by yourself. You can resolve everything alone. If you tend to do that, that's where you, you have more trouble. My friends, I invite you today to renew your trust, to renew your confidence in the Lord, to renew your faith, to know that our Lord our God is a compassionate, loving Father who is always there to carry for you, to carry you, to uplift you. Trust Him and you will see. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
or more vigorously the gospel of compassion, forgiveness, healing, and love. Always seeking new ways to sow the seeds of the gospel in our lives and communities as we seek to carry out God's holy will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those Christians throughout the world who are persecuted and suffer for their faith, that they may find strength and hope in Jesus' promise that he himself would bear witness for them with the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in government, especially those in positions of leadership in our country, that they may be true servants of each citizen, be principled in their decision, decisions, and be generous to those who are in most need in our society, and be inspired by our founding Father's vision for our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying. We pray for all in our country that they show consideration and care for themselves and for others, and abide strictly by the guidelines which our government and healthcare professionals recommend to defeat the very contagious COVID-19 virus at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, both at home and in hospital, that our loving and generous Father look down upon and give them relief from their illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For people who have suffered the breakdown of relationships, that they will be healed from the trauma of broken promises and broken dreams, and find new ways to love and compassion, companionship to grow in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. We bow our heads and remember to pray in silence for our personal intentions and for all the intentions that we have been asked to pray for. For the repose of the soul of Mr. and Mrs. Maurice Davis, and for the repose of the soul of Maurice Hilaire. And we ask for all of those who have died from the coronavirus to be taken to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are not Father of heaven and earth, you have revealed to us in your Son the power of your Spirit. Strengthen us in faith, hope, and love that we be gentle and humble as we share in the mission of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
May the salvation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation to Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels are those your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices of pray join with theirs and in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Savior is commanded formed by divine teaching. 
sheep, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious to grant peace in our days. That by the hope of your mercy we may be always with confidence and from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace and leave to my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious to your peace in unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear beloved, let us share this sign of Christ's peace to one of us.
letters. They are available in all three languages in the bulletin. Due to the restrictions being observed, the number of people allowed to attend each Mass has been greatly reduced. Mass attendance is limited to 115 people. Sunday Mass schedule has not changed. Saturday, 4 p.m., 7.30 a.m. Sunday, 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m., all of those in English, at 12 o'clock noon in Spanish, and at 5 p.m. in Haitian Creole. Daily Mass schedule is Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. Masks are mandatory. You will not be permitted to enter the church without a mask. Eucharistic ministers will be available to bring communion to your home if there is no complication and that will not put our minister's health at risk. I encourage you to call the church office and request Holy Communion be brought to your home. This is important. Please enter the church only through the main door by the pavilion or through the main door by the shrine. Exit the church only from the main church door. Exceptions are for the handicapped from the east side. No hymnals or messalettes are available. You will have to read them on the screen. No holding of hands or shaking hands is a sign of peace for the Our Father. Sanitation is a must. And sanitizer will be available at the entrance of each door. Guidelines, information, and precautions are available to help prevent the spread of virus. Every week, it will be published in the bulletin. Thank you. St. Helens School is accepting new students from pre-K-4 and up to 8th grade. VPK, Step Up for Students, and AAA scholarships are accepted. For more information, contact the school office at 954-739-7094. Extension 2002. Parents or persons in charge, you are requested to collect a baptism, first communion, or confirmation certificate to your children at St. Helens Parish Office from Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you. Together, we will replace the pews of our church as we courageously did before with the doors. Thanks to the parishioners who have returned their envelopes with their contracts. I am encouraging all of my brothers and sisters to do the same. Thank you and blessings from Father Lucien. Please stay safe. Please take home a copy of the Sunday Bulletin for more information and activities. Thanks again and have a blessed day. Be safe going home. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. We ask for this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended for a peace to serve and love the Lord and love one another. My dear beloved, may you have a wonderful and blessed and safe week with the Lord. Thank you, Father. Same to you.